From a secret location, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh my God, can you spin on your head? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Oh boy, an exclusive from People Magazine. (laughs) The title of this exclusive, Sarah Palin. My wedding hope for Bristol. It's just two paragraphs. Here's what it says. Now that Governor Sarah Palin's daughter has celebrated her 18th birthday, the GOP vice presidential candidate says she's hoping Bristol and fiancé Levi Johnston, who are expecting a baby in December, will tie the knot well before the date next summer that the young couple had been eyeing. By the way, does anybody think these two volunteered to get married? Seriously. Hopefully before that, meaning before the date next summer, the young couple had been eyeing, as I just said. Hopefully before that, Sarah Palin tells people in an October 15th interview, Bristol turns 18 in a few days. That's what we wanted her to wait for. 18. And a decision on her own about how she's going to go forward, her and Levi, at this point. Doesn't sound like a decision on her own. These two had a gun put to their heads. (laughs) It's Alaska. It's Sarah Palin. I mean, my goodness, what kind of gun do they have put to their heads? No idea. But seriously. Anybody think that uh, that these two wanted to get married? Anybody think that uh, Levi Johnston wanted to have a baby? Oh, please. Anybody think these two will get married and be married happily ever after? How many of you out there think, why are we even talking about these two? Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, it's just like when uh, People Magazine or Us Weekly reports on, you know, Jamie Lynn Spears and her baby and whether she's getting mean. Who the hell is Jamie Lynn Spears? And why should we care? I know. Also, once Sarah Palin loses along with John McCain in the election, will we ever pay any attention to Sarah Palin again? My prediction here is once Sarah Palin fades from the spotlight, If these two get married, they'll get divorced. If they uh, do not get married, ultimately at some point, they're just going to split up because he doesn't want to be a parent. He doesn't want to have a kid. I mean, this looks more like a shotgun wedding than anything I've ever seen. What do you think? Tom, Tom, Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM, have you noticed... How short these breaks are? Oh, my. Fantastic. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Oh, yes, the big interview with Sarah Palin and People Magazine about Bristol and Levi. <laughs> you got to be kidding me, right? Let's say hello to Daniel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Thomas, pleasure talking to you. How are you, man? Doing great. Great, man. Hey, you know this uh this Sarah Palin stuff, man, it's all it's all one big show, dude. Don't you agree? Which part of it? Oh well the the daughter and uh well well many aspects of it are it is fake to me. But the daughter and then the guy getting married, I mean they're just pulling it off, I mean, just to keep their maintain their image, you know, to the public and stuff. Don't you don't you think so? Well, uh, the whole thing is about that. Uh, uh, we didn't even know she was pregnant at first. Well, yeah, you know, it's like first they withhold information. And then when the information comes up, they, they, they work around it with, you know, all these stunts, you know, that they're pulling, man. I, I don't know, man. I think um, the truth comes out and then she's screwing herself over, don't you think? How so? 
oh, well, you know, people are going to find out the truth, and then everybody's like, well, first, first of all, her image is already getting messed up by the fact that her daughter was pregnant before marriage, and, and they're conservatives, and, you know, this is not the kind of things that they should be doing, but... Um, and then, and then another thing, I, I just read in the newspaper about the hundred fifty thousand dollars on on their wardrobe and, and whatnot. Uh, uh, yes, on uh, Sarah Palin's wardrobe, uh, her husband's wardrobe, even the kids got wardrobe. I don't believe it, man. Can't they spend like, I mean, if they spend just a fraction of that and then just send out the rest, I mean, they can do so much better with their money. I, I don't believe it, man. What, what is this? Well, keep in mind, the Republican Party, the people who contributed to the Republican Party, are paying for this all. Now, here's the thing. You know, it's all these designer outfits. I thought she's supposed to be a hockey mom. Why do Why do they need one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in wardrobe if she's just another hockey mom? Come on, I mean, dress like a hockey mom. Hey man, if if she's wearing one hundred fifty thousand dollars, man, she better be wearing a nice. She better be looking good on that election day, dude. Don't you agree with me? Well, she's been wearing the outfits. Do you think they're worth one hundred and fifty thousand total? My goodness, I, well, you can't really tell from TV, but. Jesus, I mean, well, whatever. Hey, Tom, it's been such a good pleasure talking to you. You think you can maybe take me out Kobe style with uh, with the Snoop Dogg at the end? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beat to my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. Biatch. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Zach on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, what's going on? Not yeah, much. I think um, Sarah Palin's daughter's marriage is a is total BS. And I think why Obama would, is going to win this uh, this election, why the Republican Party is kind of out, you know, they're they're on the way out, is because they're out of touch by hammering away, you know, claiming that that you know. They keep hammering away, like, that we have values and, and you need to, you know, have a kid in wedlock. When the truth of the matter is, if you do have a kid, there's nothing wrong with having a baby mama. You know, there's, you don't have to get married to be a good father or to be a good family. And well, I think that's know. a big... Yeah, I don't believe so. By the way, if a, if a woman ever got pregnant by me, I don't want to have a kid. So uh, forget about getting married and moving in together. Uh, you know, I'll send my check, but I would not participate. Yeah. Would not. Yeah, well, I just think uh, I think the Republican Party, they're, they're just all those old-fashioned values are, are kind of, you know, BS saying gays can't get married and, you know, just taking away basic, you know, fundamental rights that we should have as Americans. And I think uh, they're totally wrong and... I think there were, I think Sarah Palin's wrong for trying to make this kid marry into a, a heartless and loveless relationship. It'll just it'll just be for show. Anyway, and I was wondering if you can take me out with the bong hit. Yes, yes, I can. <coughs> By the way, in this exclusive interview in People magazine. Sarah Palin also says that she considers herself intellectual. <laughs> Kurt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you hey. doing, buddy? Great. Love your show, but for the last couple of weeks, you're almost you're becoming unlistenable. And I'll tell you why. Uh, because I don't agree with you. Is that it? No, no. I mean, I because well. I, I don't agree with you, but that's not why I can listen to both, you know, either side of the story. But you're just harping on that. You're starting to sound like Joy Behar. Well, first of all, what, si what side of the story am I on? Well, you're, you're obviously uh, Obama. You're going to vote for Obama. There's nothing yeah, wrong with what, that. What, but... what side does that make me? Well, you're, you're on the left. No, actually, actually I'm, that, I'm, wait, wait, no. stop, stop. I, I, but I'm not. I'll give you a variety of examples. I'm a fiscal conservative. Okay. And, and that includes the fact that uh, uh, I don't believe in uh, uh, daycare or uh, uh, child care credits. I don't believe in uh, help for single mothers. Um, I don't believe in I, – I go down the list of things I don't believe in, uh, not the least of which. In the general uh, sense, you're a liberal. I just maybe in the presidential really? uh, So how many sense. liberals how – many, how many liberals are in favor of the Second Amendment? <laughs> There's a few. But uh, they're, really? you know, they're liberal. There's very few. 
There's very few. Most liberals are in favor of gun control. Well, we can argue, yeah. I mean, you're Which not. Which I'm not. You're so you, you, you are a name caller without even knowing the facts. You don't, you don't know what I am. Uh, right, is Colin, by idea. the way, by the way, is Colin Powell a liberal? Uh, he is, uh, no, he's not a liberal. He's, uh, well, he's a, well, neither am I. He's a, he's in the middle. He's, he's not really well, a liberal. Well, uh, guess what? Not. So am I. I'm a fiscal conservative and a social liberal, but I'm, he, I'm not a liberal. Okay. I, I, not totally wrong, but have you ever voted Republican? It's not, not, have, have I voted for a Republican for president? Uh, yeah. no, but keep in mind, who have my okay. choices been? Well, <laughs> Well, okay, that's just how I'm in the presidential election. But I campaign. have voted, but I have voted for Republicans for various offices, uh, and Democrats. Um, and, and frankly, uh, I do believe that uh, as a fiscal conservative, uh, that you got shortchanged the last eight years because you, your president, the one you voted for twice. Well, I uh, voted for two thousand. To be honest with you, but you I voted, voted for, for who? I voted for Gore in two thousand. I voted really? For what are you? Are you a liberal? No, I'm, a, I'm, you I'm not. I'm not. But a, you voted I, for Gore. Sometime I mean, well, I, I didn't like either candidate. I decided on Gore at the last minute. Oh, was, but why do you call me a liberal? Well, I, I didn't say it in a, a. I wasn't putting you down. I was just saying. But it's not the point. You're why do you assume that? Because last two weeks you've been on the attack. You've, you've attacked. Yes, Gore. but that doesn't make me a liberal. Well, if you were, if you were, well, I'm a... You voted you, for Al Gore. You're a liberal. Well, I, I'm a big fan of Al Gore. I can't stand him, but I voted for him in 2000. Well, but, uh, then you must be a liberal. Mistake. I voted for Dukakis in 88, and that was a huge and mistake. Colin, and Colin Powell must be a liberal, too. Uh, well, some issues, but no, overall, he's not a liberal. I see. But but I'm a liberal because I've been supporting Obama. I was just saying that we know you're voting for Obama. Why... It's just, I mean, I, a good argument's good, but you're you're spending your almost hours of time every show going on these ridiculous. I, I did not mention the name Barack Obama until you called in. Well, but you've been mentioning McCain, Palin, Joseph Palin. Obama. Oh yes. Well, come on. How can you resist a target like that? That's the biggest idiot we've had running for national office in my lifetime. She cool. makes Dan Quayle sound intellectual. Reagan, you're aware of that, right? That sounds I'm sorry? familiar. The liberals are always attacking Republicans for being stupid. Starting with wait Reagan. a minute, and I, I've attacked I've attacked people of all parties for being stupid. I, I, I've attacked Ron Paul for being stupid. I've attacked Ron, Ron Paul. By the way, is a libertarian. Ron Paul is uh, is not a Republican, no matter what he has tried to run as. He's a he's a liberal. He's a kind I have attacked liberal. Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson too. I, I've listened to you say that, yes. I'm not saying you're an ideologue, but I'm just saying when it comes to presidential politics, you, you're on the liberal side. Nothing wrong with that. I'm no, not I, I'm, I, but I'm, I know there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm not a liberal. And I don't even agree with everything Barack Obama believes in. In fact, there are many things he believes in that I don't. Okay, well, I, I misspoke, but I would wish that you'd spend more time, you know, talking about the things we want to hear about. You know, like well, you say, well, yeah, guess what? Uh, the, we, when you say we, speak on behalf of yourself, because the fact well, is that sorry. that for years uh, people have had very little interest in politics, but that's yeah. not true now. Uh, three times as many people watched the last debate as watched CSI. Okay. Well, how about get someone to, you know, have an argument about it, but instead of proselyte, it almost sounds pro like you're proselytizing. I know. I couldn't care less who you vote for. Couldn't care less. I, I don't belong to a political party. <laughs> I don't get talking points from any political party. And okay. I don't really care. And, and honestly, uh, you know, again, I wish George Bush did what he said he was going to do. And that is cut spending. But he didn't. Well, we had a little attack going on, you know. You, you, uh, you, then all you, you do, do is you go before the American people and you say, folks, war is expensive and you're mm -hmm. going to have to ante up for this one so we don't go yeah. broke. You're right But he didn't. That. He didn't do that. He didn't. But Instead, he, he cut taxes and increased spending. Well, uh, let's, let's, say, let's agree that he's done one thing good. We haven't been attacked since 9-11. I think we could uh, I, I don't. I don't think you can necessarily credit that to George Bush. <laughs> well... Well, yeah, you'd, you'd sure blame him if he were. We were attacked, so I think that's one credit. He can take part of the credit for that. Well, I didn't. Blame, I didn't. By the way, I didn't blame him for nine eleven either. Well, nine eleven. I, I blame people after the fact. 9, I don't blame 
Clinton for that. I don't blame Bush. After the fact, well, that's my point. Like I didn't blame uh, Bush for nine eleven. So why would why you say that if why would you say if we got attacked, I would blame Bush? Uh, it would depend I, on whether Bush was responsible. Would, uh, would blame Bush if we got attacked. I, I don't think everyone problem. would have. And by the way, I don't think everyone blamed Bush for nine eleven. But no, I, yeah, I, I don't think hardly. There's including people, me. I didn't blame uh, Bush for nine eleven. Well, hardly anyway. There was a few people. I'm not saying that. I said if we were attacked again. I don't care if there were a few uh, nutcases, nut jobs out there. This was bigger than George Bush. It was. It, it had nothing to do with Republicans or Democrats. Nothing. I'm not saying 9/11, Tom. I'm saying if we got attacked again. We got attacked. I want another 9/11. I, I I would say it would be the same thing. Yeah. You know, there are some things that are more powerful than party politics. Well, uh, Tom, uh, you you misunderstand. I wasn't. I wasn't saying you're not. No, ideologue. you're I'm misunderstanding. Saying, you're well, assuming we... anyone who, who supports Barack Obama is a screaming liberal. No, no. Yes, I'm, not, I'm not even yes. saying that. I'm just saying on your radio show, you've been doing a lot of uh, anti-Republican rants. No, and I have not been doing anti-Republican rants because I'm not anti-Republican or anti-Democrat. You're anti-McCain and Palin. Well, I that. am anti-McCain and Palin for, for president and vice president, but that's it. Okay. Well, uh, and I'm, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I have friends who are, I'm, I'm going to vote for McCain and Palin, but I don't have anything against Obama. He's a, a talented candidate. He may, it looks like he may win. <laughs> and he's my president if he does. But I'm just saying, Tom, I mean, if you're going to, I love a good debate, but these rants and when you go. All right, you've said this six times, and we're not going to go seven times with it. Thank you, though. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Gilbert on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Doing great. Uh, first time caller. I've been listening to you for about two months now. Um, and uh, I want to call about, I heard you make a comment about if you had a child that, uh, I you said, wouldn't. if someone made me a parent against my will, I have no interest in participating. I don't believe that, because once uh, that child was born, you would be so attached that... Uh, no, right, you're might. wrong. Some people might be, but I'm not a person like that. Uh, believe me, it, it would happen to you. No, you would I'm your telling word. you, you are wrong. I, I really don't believe that, because... I would have not. so much resentment... At being made a hostage. The woman. At being forced to do something that I clearly don't want to do. That I would not participate. So when this, let's say you had a boy and he's running around and he's telling everybody, my daddy's Tom. Fine. You're going to be so proud. No. You're wrong. You are, you are so wrong. This shows how little you know about me. Really? Yes, because if I wanted to have that feeling, I'd have a baby. Well, if it happened because you didn't have a Jimmy and it happened and you uh, flipped. Well, well, first of all, I always have a Jimmy. And second of all, uh, I have told everybody I've ever been with. Plus, I've gone on the radio and told the world that I have no interest in having a baby. I have no intention of having a baby. And that if any woman who's with me got pregnant, I would hope they would have an abortion. And I would certainly facilitate it. Really? So, yes, and so if a woman said, I'm not going to have the abortion, I'm having the baby. Well, I will not do something at the end of the barrel of a gun. I won't. Wow. Well, if it happened to you, man, I think you'd be eating your words. Uh... Well, you, you've said again the same thing four times, and I appreciate your call. Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. How's it going, dude? Great. Hey, first off, man, I know for a fact you're not a liberal, because up until a couple weeks ago, I thought you were a full-blown Republican. Everything you say sounds Republican, and I love that. And you know what, that last guy, I mean, you made a really good point. Uh, he really put his, he put his foot in his mouth when you got him about that argument that uh, just because you voted for Gore, does that make him a liberal? It's the same freaking thing with you. Just because you're going to vote for Obama doesn't make you a liberal. That's right. Absolutely, I agree with you. And same thing with Colin Powell. I mean, what more proof do you need? We all know who Colin Powell is. Exactly. No, I mean, whoever calls and says that you're a liberal and all these Republican rants, you're idiots. And like you said, you didn't bring up Barack Obama. He did. Anyway, dude, the reason I'm calling is you know what you're talking about, Sarah Palin. You don't know the kids. You never met them. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely true. What's that? Uh, not only is that true, but I happen to know about magazines like People and Us Weekly and others. That uh, the only things that are printed in there is what the publicists will allow. 
Exactly. Well, it just seems naive to base your opinion on what you read in a People magazine. I totally agree. In fact, for me, People magazine is no more than a conversation starter. I, I certainly wouldn't use it in a court of law. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're the freaking bad. Hey, you know what? Last week I was listening to you, and you, you brought up another point that I was a little I, I disagreed with you on. You said, "Oh, you think that Sarah?" You were talking to me. You were saying, "Oh, you think Sarah Palin's intelligent?" You kept questioning him, and you said, "Oh, well, I remember the interview where uh, she said she could see Alaska from her backyard." It's a phrase, dude. How close is Alaska to Russia? Really freaking close? Am I wrong? No, no, but that's it. Was an answer to a question. What background do you have in international affairs? Yeah, being able to see Russia. By the way, it wasn't from her backyard or her back door. People have uh, uh, have twisted that quote. Yeah, uh, she said that there's an island in Alaska where, if you stand and look over, you can see Russia from it. Well, I think it's a good point. She she, she has to have some sort of foreign policy. She's really but that doesn't but practice. that doesn't make you a foreign policy expert. No, I wouldn't say she's an expert, but I don't think people should. Clown it doesn't her even. It, mean, it doesn't mean you have any experience in international affairs. The fact that you can get in your snowmobile and 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 ride to an island where you can see Russia, uh, at any more than seeing the Eiffel Tower makes me an expert on France. Yeah, I see your I see your point. But then you started hammering the guy about oh. Well, she doesn't know what kind of newspaper she reads. But when you say yourself, you don't read the newspaper because it's a dying media. I said, though, that I read uh, uh, I read newspapers on the web. And I, I've named the newspapers that I read, including the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, the New York Times. And I read the Los Angeles Times for free on my cell phone. Yeah, that's dot .com. That's not a, new, I don't know, that's not a newspaper. Yeah, it's a, well, it's a newspaper. It's a, the, All the content of the newspaper is available on the web. All of it. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Hey, you yeah. know what, man? You're, what do you mean I, you don't I, know? I, Check it. Don't take my word for it. Go to latimes.com, click on print edition, and you will see the entire contents of today's newspaper. Well, I, I think a newspaper is tangible. You know, they didn't ask her what websites do you go to. They asked what newspapers. No, but these are the the websites that reproduce the entire content of the existing newspaper. No. Nah. Yes. Well, I, uh, how about this, dude? Ronald Reagan was behind in the polls the whole time, just like McCain is. Look what happened with Reagan. Again, it doesn't matter what the polls said the whole time. Uh, the Gallup poll correctly predicted that Reagan would win both times uh, when it came right down to the week of the election. The Gallup poll was exactly right. What's the Gallup poll now say? The Gallup poll has Obama ahead by only a few points. Now, isn't that funny that the Republican Party is only behind by a few points, even though... The, uh, George Bush has the lowest approval rating ever. Even no though doubt, of- no doubt. And by the way, the same was true. I think four years ago, the fact that uh, John Kerry lost the election when Bush was already as unpopular as he was uh, spoke a lot uh, about the Democratic Party uh, more than the Republican Party. Uh, well, I just find it odd that we're only behind by a few points, even though ninety percent of, of the media is liberal and they don't get any good publicists. And we're only we're any good behind. publicists? What are you talking about? Well, I don't know. I kind of that was kind of a stupid statement, but uh, yeah. Well, I know. I, mean, I, I can see though why you think that Sarah Palin is an intellectual. Tom Likas one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show with the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Dan of the Tom Like It Show. Hey Tom, how's it going? It's going okay. Hey, it's great to talk to you. I think you're wonderful. Thank you. Hey, uh, I'm uh, from San Francisco. We're going to legalize prostitution up here. All right. But uh, anyways, my question is: uh, Are you concerned about McCain coming after you? Like, uh, you know, Willie Nelson was prosecuted after he wrote his book, and he uh, he made a statement that he smoked uh, smoked a joint on the roof of the uh, White House, and then shortly thereafter, they came after him real hard. On well, I, I look, uh, I, I certainly after my experience with McCain, nothing would surprise me. Uh, but I've never been so afraid to say anything as to not exercise my freedom. And uh, I'll I'll say what I have to say about McCain, and we'll let the chips fall where they may. Okay, and uh, I just want to I just want to say you really are the boy for uh, 
for a minute in America. And I think you're the greatest thing in the world. And, Thank you uh, so much. Can you take me out with a bomb rip? I certainly can, Dan. Can we all just get a bong? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Frank on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Frank. First time, long time, buddy, and I love your show. Thank you. Oh, man. Hey, I can't get over this whole Sarah Pin and Dollar thing, man. She got married. I just want to know, when is she going to get a divorce? No, no. Um, by the way, uh, Bristol Palin is not married. Uh, she oh. was she was supposedly, as People Magazine says, eyeing a date next summer. Oh, dang. which I think just means it's waiting to see if McCain wins. Uh, no, man, I'm I'm an Obama supporter, 110 percent, brother. This whole McCain thing, I can't I can't deal with this, man. I'm just an average Joe that works a freaking nine to five every day, and I just I I Obama all the way. I just wanted to say I love your show, and I... Frank the Plumber! Um, <laughs> Frank the Plumber, that's great. Um, Can you take me out a bong style with a Mexican screaming man? Yes, yes, I can. <laughs> Jose on the Tom Likas show, hello. Long time, first time, Tom. How are you doing today? Doing okay. Hey, um, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, there was a, a university who did a poll, and they changed the background on the candidates. For example, uh, they made uh, Michelle Obama, uh, you know, uh, change uh, reversal roles with uh, Sarah Palin about her past, about having five kids and having, you know, that baby factory of hers, and also on uh, Obama having graduated fifth from the bottom up from his class and, uh, you know, being him, uh, you know, uh, an, uh, an Afro American guy, you know, the the voters that would just uh, vote about seventy percent of the time with McCain just for the fact that that you know that he's white and you know if if Obama and Michelle they had that background on them. What do you think about that? Well, <laughs> I don't know if that's a dirty trick or an accident. I have no idea. What do you think? Well, I mean, you know, it just goes to show you that you know still in this country we you know we base everything on race. And if they were the ones who, uh, especially Michelle, if, he was, if she was the one who had five kids, you know, I'm pretty sure there will be, uh, the American people will be making all kinds of uh, suggestions and stuff about her past and uh, about not having, not being able to control, you know, all those five kids and stuff. But, uh, you know, so what do you think? What do you think the people will say about that? I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine Michelle Obama with five kids. Uh, that's not her personality. Exactly, but just just because uh, you know Sarah Palin, you know she's uh, she's white, you know everything seems like it, like it's okay, you know they don't they don't they don't uh, you know they don't they don't look at that as you know she's running for a candidate even though she annoys the hell out of me. I just want to punch her in the face sometimes. Well, you know over the years we've had a number of uh, conservative Caucasian hypocrites like Dr. Laura, telling people to stay home and raise their kids while they're out having book tours and one woman plays and whatever it is they're doing. That's the same kind of thing. Yeah, correct. And one more question for you. Why do you let a woman talk about politics on your show? There was one specifically last week that just annoyed the crap out of me. She was saying that Obama wasn't born in, in, the, in the U.S. and that she was, he was born out of the country and all this stuff, and she kept going and going. And I just wanted to, like, punch her face or something. Well, I understand that you did, but I, there's a lot of grist for the mill when you let one of those go on and expose their, uh, uh, their ignorance, which I happen to enjoy. Carlos on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Going great. Good. Hey, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you very much for, for everything. I've thrown all the facts. Don't listen to the ones that are saying they're tired of hearing the, the Paul and the McCain. And no, 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 no. That's helping people like me. I'm 22 years old, and I've been undecided for the past, uh, you know, two or three weeks. Uh, no, no, two or three months. I'm sorry. And um, you have been putting the facts out there, and um, the fact that you're not Republican or Democrat is really helping me a lot. And really, all the facts that you're throwing out there, I think I'm going to go for Obama. And I want to thank you for that. Absolutely. Well, you know, if we, if, <laughs> I don't ever expect to hear that we educated anybody, but if we've done some good, I think it's great. No, no, you're throwing the facts out there. You know, you're not really, you're not, 
you know, you keep saying you're not Democrat, you're not Republican, and that really helps because that's not what we need. You're throwing the facts out there. You're trying, you know, you're... You're throwing the, the, the yeah. I don't. I, I I I'm not like Rush Limbaugh or Sean Hannity. I don't wait by the fax machine for my talking points. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I, and, I, uh, and I love. I that. have my own opinions, and I I don't answer to any political party. And at this time, that you know, you're talking about Paul and everything. Don't don't listen to anybody saying you know you need to stop. That you're you know you're you're we're getting tired of it. No, people young like me are are listening to you. You know, and we love it. And at this point, you know, we're only what 13 days. You know, for the election, and we, we twelve need days, twelve days, twelve days, exactly. So keep keep going, keep talking about it. We love it, and I'm listening to you all the way, buddy. Carlos, thank you for that. It's Julie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, long time listener. How you doing? Doing okay. Awesome. Um, you were talking about the issue of you getting trapped by a woman that gets that you knock up. I totally suggest an abortion. Absolutely, I'm for it. I tell them up front. I don't want to be a parent. Right. Why should you be a parent? we got too many kids out in the world as it is. It's so unnecessary. Why would you want to have a kid that you're not going to love? That's retarded, right? Yeah, well, these women have every option to use birth control, take a morning after pill, have an abortion. If after all of that they decide they're going to have my baby regardless, well, they get what they paid for. Right. It's so unnecessary to have unnecessary children in the world. We've got too many of them. It's, out, it's outrageous behavior. I think women should really think about what they do before they decide to have kids. Well, you think a guy is going to be out there, oh, I'll just go ahead and pay for you. No problem. It doesn't work that way. It's too much. I, I totally agree with you, Tom. I'm so pro-choice. I'm so for it. Thank you for that, Julie. Here's Tony on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tony. It's an honor to talk to you, Tom. I know. I have a quick question for you. If Hillary was running... With McCain, who would you vote for? If Hillary was running against McCain? Yeah. Hillary. Why? Because I wouldn't vote for John McCain for dog catcher. I see. All right, that was my question, man. There's your good. answer. Blow me up, baby. I'll blow you up. Here you go. Eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, here's Jonathan on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. I knew you, I know you're doing great, so I'm not going to bore you with questions. Uh, I want to ask you, just give you my perspective on the situation. Recently, I've been listening to you, following you know everything that's going on, and it occurred to me today that, and obviously you know, an incumbent president with Bush's record, the recipe of disaster that the economic situation has caused with you know American health, everything going on, along with the choice of someone like Palin, and I'm kind of talking but the day before McCain made that choice, I think that they, I'm starting to think that the Republican Party thought this was a foregone conclusion, that they were going to lose this. I don't think that there was a Republican in their right mind that has any experience in the House, Senate, or anything else that wanted to go and be a running mate with McCain under this climate because it was going to be a realignment, as you know we're about to see. And I think that in, in times like this, I think that they'd be more calculated. She goes and spends 150 dimes out at Saks and Neiman's. You've got to think that they would have put the fires out ahead of time. They're more calculated, predictable, and they just, it's like, you know, it's like the Kings game in the third period against the Blackhawks, 5 nothing down. You know, the guys are skating, but they don't, they don't really care. They know the game's over. They want to get to the locker room and move on, go for dinner and call it a day. And I'm starting to think that this whole thing is, and, you know, look, you say what you want about Palin. I mean, she's an absolute moron. But I think she's almost getting set up because, I, like you just said a little bit earlier, and I've had the honor to be sitting on hold for a while, so it's good, she will never be heard from again. It's like the movie Dave. Well, I think that's true. I think this is uh, her 15 minutes of fame. Uh, in my mind, there's no doubt about it. And at some point after the voters in Alaska kick her out or term limits kick her out or whatever, you know, at some point she'll be in Playboy or somewhere like that. You See, just know it. You're probably right. You're probably right. But do you think that that is a possibility that they really let McCain take the sword? There wasn't a running mate that would go up against him because, look, if they have any chance for, oh, what is it, 12 or whatever it is, you know, the next election, that there's not a guy that wants to do that at this time. Because the chance of a Democrat winning right now was going to be very likely. 
Is that a possible scenario? Because I'm starting to see this everything. That, I mean, how bad she is with the media. She wouldn't even get out to the media, and everything's just, just so it's one thing after another with the poor girl. You almost got to feel sorry for her. No, no, I, Jonathan, I got to tell you, I wouldn't go that far. 1-800-5800-TOM. Like is 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. The new faster, sleeker, Leaner. Tom Likas show. I was going to say meaner. How much meaner can it get? 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Sandy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I called you, Tom, because I think you need to be pretty responsible when you turn on a microphone and you have as big of an audience as you have. Well, how the... irresponsible have I been? I'm sorry. Well, I'm just saying that your overt support of Barack Obama, without really knowing a lot, I think, about the other side to Barack, which a lot of things have not come out, but I happen to be originally uh, from... Darling, Illinois. everything that can come out is coming out. Everything. There, they, there's it's too... There are too I, many... There are too many sources for information now. And there's nothing that is not coming out. And there's nothing that you know that isn't knowable. I. That's exactly my point. But how, how it's emphasized is certainly... Certainly different and skewed. well. Yeah, you, if you want to call the Hugh Hewitt show on KRLA and have this conversation, you go right ahead. And there's 80 million uh, conservative AM talk show hosts who are having conversations about every kind of uh, smear you can possibly imagine. Uh, well, so you're not interested in hearing what I have, darling. To say I've I've read everything you've read. It and I, I, read, I, I, I like the majority of Americans, have decided on who I'm voting for. It's what I've experienced. So, but you have decided. So you, let me understand, you personally know and have experienced Barack Obama. You I yourself. I personally from the state of Illinois. No, 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 no. You, you just said you personally experienced. No, I will, no, you will not tell me to listen to you. You listen to me. If you say you personally have experienced it, you, <laughs> did you just hang up? Hello? What happened there? She hung up. For a second there, it sounded like she was still talking, and I could hear the dial tone at the same time. It's weird. Anyway, Grandma, the bottom line is, don't you be calling this program and telling me you had personal experience, and your experience was that you lived in the state of Illinois. That's not personal experience. That means that Lou Pinellas had the same experience. Ernie Banks, Michael Jordan. Now, Michael Jordan doesn't even live in Illinois. 1-800-5800-TOM. Eric is calling from the home of the other white meat, Portland, Oregon. Hello. Hey, Tom. Always good to talk to you. I know. Uh, so I got to tell you, man, this uh, hyper-partisan political environment really just is, is making me sick. And... Uh, you know, I like I like tuning in and listening to you. I like I've, I've been listening to you for a long time, and uh, I like that you've expanded your format a little bit. And I like that you're not just uh, some hack pundit out there on either side, uh, just repeating talking points like you you know like you mentioned before. Um, and you know, it, it disheartens me. Um, I've always been a fiscal conservative and uh, kind of a libertarian, and it disheartens me to see uh, people that are traditional Republicans still supporting this neo neoconservative version of the Republican Party that that spends and spends and has no idea of fiscal conservatism and then wants to uh, stick their nose in all my, my personal uh, business and try to regulate it. Well, and that's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, if somebody truly wanted to reduce the size of government, please let me know who you are. But the candidates uh, I'm, I'm listening to today... I don't hear either one of them talking about that or showing any record of it. So I'd rather just get uh, throw the old bums out and bring the new bums in. Yeah, I, I can't agree with you more, man. Um, like I said, I appreciate the expansion of your program. I listened to it uh, before anyways, but uh, uh, I really like to hear the uh, the, uh, the larger discussion. Um, we go ahead and uh, take me out with a bong hit and demonstrate that we're, uh, we're not all burnout smoke. I certainly will. <coughs> it's 
one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Jimmy on the Tom like his show. Hello. Yo, Tom. Yes. Hey, I just want to say I'm so supporting your choice for Barack Obama. It's good. Good to hear somebody. Uh, good to hear somebody jumping on board for this. I don't. I don't make near enough money to buy into this capitalistic stuff that McCain is uh, supporting. Well, uh, I don't even know what McCain is supporting as far as the economy is concerned. I'm really not clear on that. Well, I mean, he's, he wants to, you know, he wants people to have varying levels of wealth, you know. And I, I think what Obama is saying about spreading the wealth around is brilliant. And it makes me wonder why haven't we tried it up until now, you know. And, and it really reminds me of, uh, it really reminds me of what was happening to the economy of Germany in pre-World War II, and, you know, we need an inspiring person. We need somebody that's going to step up, and, you know, a Fuhrer, somebody who is going to, uh, you know, somebody that's going to inspire change and hope, and that's what Barack Obama is. You know, and it reminds me of what Adolf did back, uh, back for Germany when their economics were uh, suffering. <laughs> so you're comparing uh, Barack Obama to Adolf Hitler? Well... I mean, what I'd say is I'm, I'm very thankful that somebody is bringing these socialistic ideas to uh, to America. Oh, now I know. Now I know that you're a fraud, and uh, clearly you support the other side. But uh, thank you so much for that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Tim on the Tom Likas show. Uh, Wes on the Tom Likas show. Real quick, Mr. Likas, a pleasure. I know. I, I love your show, man. I, I love that last guy comparing Obama to Hitler. That's a new one. Yes. And trying to sound like an Obama supporter. <laughs> Great. Um, I'm uh, originally Canadian, uh, partly socialist country, and we get all the good parts of socialism. You guys get all the bad. It's sad, but, you know, they love you. Um, anyways. I, uh, well, anyways, I, I wish you'd talked about what you called to talk about, because now we're out of time. It's the Tom Likas Show.